Welcome to our lecture online. Our next problem is a little bit more challenging, especially since we can't use calculators. So what does this problem deal with? It deals with Coulomb's law and it's part of the JE main physics ENM portion. So two small spheres, each of mass 10 micrograms, are suspended from a point by threads 0.5 meters long. They are equally charged and repel each other to a distance of 0.2 meters. The charge on each of the spheres well, I should be an S there, is A over 21 times 10 to the minus 8 coulombs. The value of A will be, and let's take G as 10 meters per second squared. All right, so what strategy should we take? Well, first of all, let's make a sketch on what is happening. So I have two strings suspended from the same point, each with a small sphere. This is the repulsion causes them to move out to a distance equals to 20 meters. We realize that the length here is equal to, oh, not 20 meters, but 0 0.20 meters, so 0.20 meters, and the length is equal to 0 0.5 meters. And then if we draw a line straight down, we can then draw an angle here called a theta, and so we see a relationship here that we can then use if we're going to set up some vectors. Notice we have the force, the Coulomb force, right here, which is equal to k q squared over the distance squared, the distance being 20 centimeters, and then we have the mg pulling down, and then we can use that in order to draw a similar triangle using vectors, like this. We have this here represents mg, this here represents the Coulomb force, which is k q squared over distance squared and notice that this is the same angle theta and then we can see there's a relationship between the opposite side and the adjacent side and we can use that for the tangent of theta so there that's kind of the way we want to set that up and using that principle we can say that the tangent of theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side over the adjacent side and that's going to be equal to the magnitude of this force which is k q squared over d squared and in the denominator we get the adjacent side which is mg and this equation can be solved for q because that's what we're looking for the charge so q will be equal to the square root of the tangent of theta multiply times d squared mg all divided by k and if we can solve for that we have the charge all right, let's plug in the numbers that we have, and we'll leave tangent of theta for a moment. We'll fill in the others. We have Q is equal to the square root of the tangent of theta. D will be 0 0.2, and we square that. M will be 10 times 10 to the minus 6, and G will be 10, like this. All right. In the denominator, we'll have 9 times 10 to the 9th. Okay, so what can we already take out? We have a 0.2 squared, that can be taken out of the square root sign. We have a 10 times 10, that can be taken out, and we have a 9 in the denominator. So we have Q is equal to 0 0.2 times 10, so it would be 10 divided by the square root of 9, which is 3. And uh, let's see, what else do we have? Um, okay, uh, 10 times 10 to the minus 6, 10, so that comes out, that comes out. Oh, I forgot something. It's 10 times 0.2, that would be 2 over 3, there we go. And then we have what's remaining, we have the tangent of theta. We took that out, we took the 10s out, we have times 10 to the minus 6, divided by 10 to the ninth. Okay, now we need to figure out what the tangent of theta is. So for that we go back to this triangle, we have 0.5 meters here. This here would be 0.1 meter, 0 0.1 meter, because it's half the total distance. And so that's a ratio of 5 to 1. If this is 5 and this is 1, then this side right here can be taken to be the square root of the hypotenuse squared, which is 5 squared minus the opposite side squared, 1 squared, which is 25 minus 1, or the square root of 24. So the tangent of theta 
is the opposite side over the adjacent side, which is square root of 24. So this can be written as q is equal to 2 over 3 times the square root of 1 over the square root of 24 times 10 to the minus 6 times 10 to the 9th. Okay, how do we deal with 1 over the square root of 24? Well, I know that the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 24 must be about 4.9. So I'm going to replace this by 4.9. So this can be written as 2 over 3 times the square root of 1 divided by 4.9. And we have 10 to the minus 6 divided by 10 to the 9, which is times 10 to the minus 15. If I now multiply this by 10, then I need to multiply the numerator by 10. Okay, so let's come up here and do that. So we have q is equal to 2 over 3 times the square root of the numerator now becomes 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Oop, I'm getting ahead of myself. 14, because I multiplied the numerator by 10 and I'm going to multiply the denominator by 10, which is 49 now. So now I can factor out the denominator, which is 7 times 3, which is 21. So q is equal to 2 over 21 times the square root of 1 times 10 to the minus 14, which can be written as q is equal to 2 over 21 times 10 to the minus 7. Now looking up here, I need 10 to the minus 8. So I need to divide this by 10 and multiply this by 10. So I get q is equal to 20 over 21 times 10 to the minus 8. And then I have everything exactly the same. Of course, that's coulombs. And then in the numerator, I get 20 should be equal to a. So a equals 20. And that should be the correct answer in this expression coming from right here. And that is how it's done. So again, to, to summarize, the key here is to have a, a geometry caused by the two strings being repelled, or the two charges being repelled, giving you this triangle. We split it in half, we get the angle right here. We know the length is 50 centimeters, we know this is 10 centimeters, we have a relationship that gives a tangent of theta. But then we can equate that to a similar triangle made up from the vectors, the weight of the, of the balls pulling down, the Coulomb force pulling to the right, so the ratio of these two, the tangent of this angle, will be the opposite side over the adjacent side, and the tangent of theta will also be 1 over the square root of 24. So setting that equal, we can solve for Q, we have it like here, and then it's just a bunch of arithmetic without a calculator to come up with this expression. So yes, this will probably take you more than three minutes, but hopefully you were able to shave off a little bit of time of some of the other problems. And that is how it's done.